Okay, I'm Daryl Bensinger from DNL Bensinger. Today we're going to discuss combat wheels. This is a combat wheel here as was used on the World War II Jeeps in 1942 to probably 1945. The combat wheel consists mainly of three pieces the two wheel halves and what is known as a bead separator. The bead separator is the center part here, the center band. The purpose of the combat wheel was to be able to drive the Jeep with a flat tire. In combat conditions, it was something that could have been a very good asset. The bead separator has two flanges on it, and then the bead of the tire would fit down in here. And the tire bead would be trapped or clamped between these two sections so that if the tire were to go flat, you could continue to drive on it and it would not be able to come off the rim because the bead is clamped in here between the separator and the side of the, of the wheel. Now, today, the bead separators that you see here, uh, those are, uh, this is on our reproduction wheel. The, the uh, wheel would come apart in this fashion. I've already uh, removed the eight bolts that are on the back side that hold the two halves together. You have eight different eight bolts, eight lug nuts. Now, also on, the, on any of the combat wheels or any tires, both sides of this wheel will have a uh, warning tag. And it's, it's, it's welded on, it's a steel tag, it's right between the bolt heads and right between the bolt lug nuts, and it says, Air pressure can be a very dangerous thing and you do not want to take the tire apart while it has any kind of air pressure. Now, the, the bead separator's function, as we discussed, was for allowing you to drive the vehicle with a flat tire. These bead separators are not made today. Um, a, couple of, a couple of reasons you don't want to use them, we do not use them at all anymore. Number one, 40, 50, 60 years old now since they've probably been last taken apart. Most of the time, they're rusted solid onto the two halves of the wheel. A lot of times you end up having to cut them. Uh, they, just, they just aren't worth fooling with because the purpose of them to drive a vehicle with a flat tire, no collector, no restoration guy, no reenactor is going to want to drive the Jeep around with a flat tire for any length of time. You're going to want to fix it. So the bead separator, while, while you may find it on a used wheel, an old wheel, you do not want to use it today. The two halves of the wheel, as they bolt together, will leave a, a seam in here. So, to replace the bead separator, today we use a tire flap. And the tire flap is a heavy piece of rubber which will go inside the tube, inside the tire, and it'll end up protecting the tube from going up in between these, these two halves of the wheel. That way you won't pinch your tube and get a flat tube when you're, uh, when you're assembling the wheel or driving it later. So currently your tire tube, your rubber flap, is going to replace your bead separator. Another reason why you don't want to use the bead separators is that during the war, because of this clamping action here, the thickness of the tire bead had to be strictly maintained at a certain dimension so that it would work properly on a combat wheel. Tires that were acceptable for combat wheels had a red dot on the side of the tire. I don't imagine today's manufacturers bother keeping that kind of a standard. Uh, the only time it would ever have been, been needed was when you were using a combat wheel with a bead separator. So in today's world, you don't worry about that bead separator at all. combat wheel sections. You've got one section that has the, that has the uh, valve stem area here and what we'll do, we've got a tire here currently. We've already put a tube in this tire and we've given it a little tiny bit of air just to give it some structure. At this point we'll work on putting the flap in. The flap has, uh, has the hole for the valve offset which is the same way it is on a tube offset. 
So you want to match those up, and the goal is to slide this down in the sides of the tube smoothly between the tube and the tire. And that'll take a few minutes to do, and I'll work on that. At this point we've gone ahead and inserted our flap and you've got to take a lot of care in putting the flap in. You always want to run your fingers down along here when you're done. Make sure you don't have any wrinkles in it. Make sure the flap's not curled up on the edges of the tire. Any kind of a, any kind of a fold in the flap or the tube is going to give you a flat someday. So take some time, get that centered in there right. Once we have that properly installed. Then we start with our valve stem wheel half and we begin by lining up the valve stem, dropping the wheel in as best we can and then we'll insert our tire tube guard, valve stem guard Now with the valve stem guard installed, that'll keep our valve stem in place. At this point we've inserted the valve stem half of the wheel. We pulled our valve stem out far enough that we could thread on our valve stem protector. And the nice part about this is we get that threaded in place there and then that holds that valve stem in the proper orientation and it won't move around on us, it won't fall back down in the wheel. When we go to add a little bit of air, it's going to stay right where we want it. So I always try to pull the valve stem up through the half of the wheel and get the valve stem protector on it so that it stays put. Now we'll turn this over. Get prepared to put the second half of the wheel in. You might find it helpful to have a little bit of soapy water. Just regular dishwashing soap, a little bit of water, help make the parts slide better on the, on the rubber. Our second half of the wheel does have locating notches, those have to line up as well as the bolt holes. started. Now the combat wheel bolt has a square hex on it and one flat side. It's not unusual for these bolts to come loose out of the wheel. They can be replaced if you have old ones. On a new wheel some of them will come loose. Once you locate them correctly and tighten them down they're not going to go anywhere. They're not actually welded to the wheel. They're simply pushed into the square hole in the proper orientation and then tighten down. In this case we've got two of them that came loose. At this point, I'm going to very carefully and going around back and forth evenly tighten the combat lug bolt to the combat wheel nuts down. Once we have those tightened down, then we'll be ready to try to put a little area. At 
this point we've got the two heads and a wheel securely bolted together. We've got our valve stem guard tightened. The bead is still not completely set. We can still get our fingers in here. There's still no, the bead's still not up where it belongs. But we know by the way we tighten our rear bolts that the two halves are securely together. So at this point, I'm going to add enough air just to pop that bead. Now this bead came up nice and slow, it's almost all the way up there now, seated, sometimes they'll pop make a little bit more noise than that, this one didn't make any noise at all, it just slowly came up. Check the back side, the bead's all set here, the tire is up, up tight. Alright, we've now checked our bead, both our rear and front beads have seated with the minimum amount of air we put in it. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and put the 20-pound uh, road pressure in here and then we'll set them aside and we'll be ready to put these on the Jeep as soon as we get the rest of that project done. And that is assembly of a World War II combat wheel. You've got the combat wheel nuts in the back here that allow you to take the wheel apart. One other nice feature of being allowed to take that wheel apart is that during the war that could be done in the field. So if you had a flat tire, the, you would take your lug wrench out, deflate the tire if it wasn't already flat, but assuming you have a flat tire, you're not going to have an air pressure problem. You can take this wheel apart in the field with hand tools, you can patch the tube, you can put it back together. Each Jeep had a bicycle style tire pump underneath the uh, rear seat. You can pump the tire back up again, make a tire repair in the field without any special equipment but what was on board the Jeep. So there's your World War II Jeep combat wheel and tire assembly. Okay, we've assembled the combat wheel. And if you remember, in the beginning of the, beginning of the work, we talked about how air pressure can be, can be dangerous. We showed you that the combat wheel on both sides has tags on it, warning tags about unbolting the combat wheel during the uh, time when it still has air pressure in it. We put just enough air in the wheel as we were assembling it to get the, to get the uh, tube to, to have a little bit of form to get assemble the wheel. And now at the final stage, you fill the tire up to its road pressure. Now the World War II Jeep is not like your modern cars. The maximum tire pressure is 30 pounds. That's probably half what your modern cars have in them. Do not overinflate these tires. Read your directions, read your tires, and read your manuals. And 30 pounds is your maximum tire pressure. The combat wheel is held together by eight half inch thick bolts. Normally, that's a much safer setup than, say, some of these old truck rims that had a, a, a locking bead or a split ring that you've probably heard of. In any event, err on the side of safety. When you're going to fill your tire to the road, road uh, amount, you just never know, always, always err on the side of safety. We have here a tire cage made out of steel pipe. We put the tire in the cage, we use a remote air filling valve so you don't have to have your hands in the cage while you're filling it. We fill the tire to its road road air pressure and leave it in there 10 or 15 minutes, you don't have to be in a hurry. Uh, you should not have a problem with these wheels, but again, safety is your responsibility. Always err on the side of safety. Take all precautions you can.